Today I shall show you a brief uh, tutorial on how to include high quality electronic circuit diagrams as part of your technical reports or papers or any other document which you may use to make in your academic and professional career. So the method I'm going to show you uh, today will uh, involve predominantly uh, LaTeX. And uh, I hope uh, most of you are familiar with how to use LaTeX at least at the basic level. Now, a very good software that you can use to draw electronic circuits in both Linux and Windows operating system is a software called XCircuit, the one I'm, I'm showing on my screen right now. So it is available for use in both Windows and Linux. And the best part is it is free of cost. So Without further ado, let us uh, open it and uh, once you open it, you see that uh, a window showing a number of grid and matrice, matrices or rather a grid matrix uh, is uh, shown on the screen. So the first thing that you do is go to window and over here go to library and uh, just go to the generic library. What you will see is there are many uh, electronic components which are available to you. So uh, let us uh, make a integrator circuit using an op-amp. So click on the op-amp and drag it by clicking the left button of your mouse to a point where you want to place it. And when you want to release when you want to place it at this point you release the mouse following that you again go back to the library a shortcut to going to the generic library page is to press the l key on your keyboard because l stands for library so if you press the l key you can see the different libraries that are available to you we want this one on the left so we click this so to make an integrator, we need two resistors and a capacitor. So we'll click on this resistor and drag it and place it over here. However, I want this to be rotated by 90 degrees. So I go to this or this button and keep clicking like this once I have the angle that I want. So you can use either a clockwise rotation or an anti-clockwise rotation, whichever you want. Now, you know that we need to have one more resistor. You can have two options, either to get a fresh one from the library and then rotate it just like how we did for this particular component. Otherwise, you can simply copy the existing component. So you can go to this option called copy where you see two stars both of which are bold. Just click and then this will get attached to your mouse. There is no need to drag it all the way. So let's say I'm going to place it over here. Once you're done, click the scroll button of your mouse. If you're happy with where to place, otherwise the component will be stuck to your mouse pointer. What is the other component we need? We need a capacitor. So let me go back to L, choose this library, and I'm going to put this capacitor, drag it, and keep it over here. Suppose I keep it here. Now, again, I need to rotate it. So I'll just show you a clockwise rotation this time. So what you can see, these two are not perfectly aligned vertically with each other. So I would like to move this slightly to my left, move the capacitor. So I'll go to this button called move where you see one faint star and a bold star. So you click on the capacitor and keep dragging it to the left until you want to release. And finally, once it's in place, you release. So what is left now is uh, to draw the wires. Finally, we can choose this option called line and start drawing 
from here all the way this point but uh, before doing that you can es use the escape key to exit the wire mode i would just take a minute to move this resistor one place down and then draw the wire this is the starting point you left click to start the wire and to finish the wire you need to click the scroll button likewise i can complete this side and the rest of it is fairly simple now i can keep one wire for the input one small piece of wire for the output i'm sure you know that you need to connect the non inverting input to the ground so therefore let's go back to the library and select the ground pin over here and i can keep it at this point and i shall follow it up with another piece of wire now another good part about this software is that you can uh, draw or you, uh, you you can write text along with your drawings so let me write v in over here in small letters let me call this as uh, r1 i can call this as uh, r2 and i can call this as c and this point i can call as v out you can simply click where you want to write the text by clicking on this a button which shows you text wherever you click now you can write some text if you don't want to write simply escape now to save this file go to file click on write x circuit ps now ps stands for postscript so let's say i want to save it in uh, my d drive and call it test1 dot eps now eps is called the encapsulated postscript format and this is the format which you would like to save your x circuit files in now there's a special reason behind this i shall not go into it today but you can look it up eps has a lot of advantages so after this path and file name are set you can simply click on write file and now you're done so let us now go to the next step i am using the i am using the overleaf tech editor overleaf tech editor you can simply type let's say and you can simply type an uh, example circuit is shown in figure now we normally write figure numbers but since we are using latex we can simply give a reference we can say ref fig let's say test one you can give any name which you want so now let's invoke the figure before doing this we must upload the figure that we have drawn into this portal and uh, over here let me simply go to this file that we've made just a while back and then we are done so as you can see this eps file has been included so you can just say center in uh i can say scale equals 0.7 test 1. eps followed by the caption
Now you can simply put the label which has to be the same name as the reference link that is fig colon test1. Alright, so now we'll have to compile. So once you compile, So I forgot to mention this. Use package graphics. So without that, it's not going to work. So as you can see now, after compiling, I have this circuit diagram ready. So it looks really nice. I'm sure all of you will agree. But the problem is, you see all the text inside the circuit that is V in R1, R2, C, it is not the same font as the rest of your document. You can clearly see that the fonts are different. This is the Roman font and this is Helvetica, the ones in the circuit. So to get away with this, we need to use a package called as PSFrag. Package lets you replace the diagram font with the font of your own choice and the text of your own choice. So you can simply say use package and mention PS frag. Now the way to use this is very simple. I can say now let's look at this thing called V in. I would like to write the voltage in capitals and the in as a suffix in small letters. So PS frag has two parentheses. In the first one, you write the text that you want to replace and that is begin. And in the second parenthesis, you need to write the text which must replace this existing text. So I can say capital V underscore small i n as the suffix. So let's recompile and see what happens if this works. This doesn't work. That's because you need to go to the menu and change your compiler from PDF LaTeX to LaTeX. So once you are done, you recompile and yes, you now see it is begin. The font has changed. Likewise, I can do for R1. So the font I want to change or the text I want to change is R1 in capitals and I want to write it in the form of R suffix 1. If you recompile, you will see that this has changed. Now suppose I want to write some value in place of R2. I can do this. I can say R2. Let's say the value I want to write is 10 kilo ohms. I can say 10 slash followed by a comma indicates a half space for units. So let's see if it works. Yes, it does. You can see a 10k has come. So I hope you will use this in your reports and uh, all your professional documentation. And I also hope that this tutorial has been useful for you all. Thank you very much.